I already made one stage of this video where I argued the following. That argument makes no sense because it's based on a logical fallacy that improbability implies impossibility. And I argued that unlikely events happen all the time and one cannot use the very low probability of one event happening after it has happened to deduce the influence of a higher power in that event occurring. For example, the event of a shuffling of cards resulting in this particular shuffling is extremely unlikely. Indeed, the probability of any one shuffling happening is 1 in 52 factorial possibilities, which is really close to zero. But a number of people argued the following, what if somebody shuffles the cards, but a very specific shuffling happens? For example, what if the shuffling that happens actually results in all the cards in order? Then we would be very suspicious that there was some mechanism that resulted in this particular order. But then we are falling in a different kind of logical fallacy when we are trying to jump into that conclusion. And that would be the same logical fallacy we would be falling into if we computed the probability that the universe cosmological constants that allow for life, if that probability is zero, and we deduce from that that there must be a higher power that fine-tuned these constants so life could exist. Let me explain through an example. Consider the following problem. Suppose I walk into a classroom and there are 20 students. What is the probability that every student in the classroom has a twin sibling? We can actually estimate this because about 30 in a thousand births uh, are twins. Therefore, the probability of being a twin, let's say, is about 30.7 divided by a thousand, so about 0 0.03. Then the probability that all 20 students have a twin sibling would be the probability that one has a twin, the second has a twin, etc. until the 20th has a twin, so it's 0 0.03 to the 20th power, which is, well, tiny. So the probability that everyone in the classroom has a twin is essentially zero. So if I walk in into the classroom and there are 20 twins, then I would be very surprised and I would think, well, there is some higher mechanism that made this happen. But what about a different question, which is more relevant to our scenario? What is the probability that every student in that classroom has a twin sibling if this is a class that is designed for twins and only twins can enroll in my class? But then we're not computing just a regular probability, we're computing what we call a conditional probability, the probability of event A given that we are assuming condition B. And in this case, we're computing that every student has a twin, given that to enroll in this classroom, you need to be a twin. In that case, this probability is one, is 100%, unless there is some administrative mistake. And exactly the same thing happens when we talk about the value of the cosmological constants that allow for life to exist because we're computing a conditional probability. The conditional probability of the universe constants allowing for life to exist, given that life does exist in this universe. Or in other words, we cannot be surprised by the least, by the fact that the universe cosmological constants allow for life to exist when there is life in this universe. That would be as if dentists were surprised every time a patient walks through the door and they were surprised they need dental work. Of course they do, they are at the dentist's office. In summary, the likelihood or unlikelihood of the cosmological constants is irrelevant because probability cannot be used this way to prove or disprove the existence of a creator.